Check out this rare vehicle. I'm sure people watching this video, if you know what this is, you haven't seen one of these on the road in a long time. This is a super rare Chevrolet Beretta Indie Edition, circa 1990. It was only made in one year. This was a barn find. I got this in 2020, right when all the craziness was kicking off which made getting it up to Pennsylvania very difficult from down south. Got it on eBay for 600 bucks only. Just gonna go over this vehicle and its story and just show you some of the cool things about it. I love the rear end section of these vehicles with the lights. really notice these Berettas when they're out there due to the backlight section. These rims are so late 80s, early 90s. I love them. Just absolutely love these rims. That aesthetic is great. Yes, I know that reflector's broken. Had to move my vehicle because of the guy cutting grass. It was just too much to bear. So this is not your standard Chevrolet Beretta. As you can see here, it says official pace car. 74th Indianapolis 500, May 27, 1990. And it was just a rare edition Beretta that was kind of a gimmick in a sense because it's really not that much different than just a regular Beretta GT. Okay, had to move again. So this car was first produced in 87, the Chevrolet Beretta. So in 1990, when they have the Indy Pace car come out, everyone was like, oh, wow. This is a Chevrolet Beretta? <laughs> it's not a sports car. You know, usually they have like Camaros, Corvettes, whatever for the pace car. And I believe it was a yellow pace car and it was a convertible. And that's why I'm basically saying that the Indy Edition Beretta is a gimmick because it was misleading. Everyone was like, wow, the Beretta is going to be a convertible now? And they were like, no. They basically just cut the roof off of a standard GT and made it into a fake convertible. <laughs> oh, that's so great. So the Indy edition, I think it just has a slightly different suspension than a regular GT. They came in an automatic or five speed manual option. They have these cool state of the art for the time rear view mirrors. They have the awesome, <laughs> they are actually pretty cool, indie seats. This one has to get reupholstered. Horribly needs a restoration on the interior. It smells like mold and everything. I have to rip the whole carpet out. It came with these cool badges, which are just stickers. Again, in the very retro late 80s, early 90s, pink pastel aesthetic. You get this cool sticker. Really awesome rims. So as opposed to the regular Berettas that were being produced in the year of 1990, there was only 4,500 of these made. There was 1,500 in yellow 
and 3,000 in this teal turquoise color. The overwhelming majority of those 4,500 vehicles produced, again, the Indy edition, were automatics. Not a lot were five-speed manuals. And this is a five-speed manual. So I'll start the engine up next. So this car just sounds a lot faster than it really is. <laughs> it's only got, um, let me look here, looking on my stats. Again, 3.1 V6 option on this. They did have a 2.8 liter V6. They did have four cylinder Beretta and Corsicas. The Corsicas were the slightly uglier sister of the Beretta, in my opinion. Four door back end was just gross looking in my opinion again so this is not a sports car again 135 horsepower roughly give or take like 10 15 horsepower it's probably pushing about 150 uh, there's 180 foot pound of torque goes 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds does a quarter mile in 16.3 seconds yeah not the fastest car but it does get up and go I think the car is roughly only 2,700 pounds. It's a pretty small coupe. Yeah, so I have terrible timing as always. I buy it in March of 2020. We all know what happens then. Couldn't see the car again because it came from the south. I eventually have it towed up here when everything kind of started to calm down a little bit. It was sitting down in the barn where it came from since about 2012, 2013, something like that. So he said it needed a new clutch and brake lines. Well, here's the list thus far, and it's still kind of a mess, this vehicle. I needed new plugs and wires, new battery, new rotors, brakes, calipers, the back of our drums, all new, new e-brake cable, new valve cover gaskets, all the fluids on the vehicle have been changed. I did a fuel injector cleaner um, process where they do it like directly into the fuel injection system, just not the fluid that you put in the tank. I'm not that well versed in vehicles, but it was like the $100 treatment or whatever. Had to get an alignment. I got a new tire, new struts, new shocks, New clutch, new clutch slave cylinder, new clutch master cylinder, new dashboard cover, which is like a hardened plastic one, like 130 or $180, something crazy, because these GM dashes from the time period were notoriously horrible. They would crack relentlessly. I saw that someone said like a year or two after they brought their car home from the dealership, the dashboard was already cracking horrifically. I had to glue on my rear view mirror because it was on the floor, naturally. <laughs> the interior one that goes on the top center portion of the windshield on the inside. I had to get new brake lines, new wiper blades, naturally. 
new light bulbs for the front lights. Sorry for the traffic, it's just impossible to film today. A new water pump, cause why not? A new heater core, cause that's always fun. New thermostat, new radiator, right after I did the clutch this past week. New radiator hose that was also leaking after it was put on. So that's fun. But overall, I absolutely love this vehicle. I have essentially done a mechanical restoration on it. I was not planning on it. I really wasn't. But this is such a rare car. Again, this is one of 4,500 made. If you want to get technical, it's only one of 3,000 made. And then in addition to that, this is the rare five-speed manual. So how many five-speed manual Beretta Indy editions are on the road? Maybe a hundred or less. People will say, well, why would you buy this vehicle? It's just a Chevy Beretta. I mean, yeah, I, I see your point. However, these have just become very rare in recent years due to the cash for clunkers, the overall age of the vehicle, and like it or not, you know, they have their deficiencies, especially the interiors. Your interiors are just utter garbage in these vehicles. But this 3.1 liter V6 and the 2.8 liter V6s were great engines. Absolutely amazing reviews on them. Not a lot of late 80s, early 90s vehicles on the road, too. And I just kind of like that era. Again, you know, being born in 1986, I'm kind of going through a midlife crisis. And I had, as my first car, my parents' 88 Chevy Beretta. It was a 2.8 liter V6, silver. Had the infamous paint chipping problems because these were notorious for chipping horrendously especially once you brought it home it just started flaking right off my original beretta was so bad with the paint flaking that i ended up painting it with a paintbrush like an idiot because i was like 18 19 years old i painted it with a paintbrush like a gm from i think the paint was from like 84 brown it was a real weird color and I remember people used to yell at me. I remember one guy was like, hey, did you hand paint that car, boy? And I, was, I would ignore him. And he's like, I'm talking to you. Did you paint that car with a paintbrush, boy? Just crazy people out there. And I later uh, ended up spraying that car black with spray paint. I was poor. I was a kid, you know. But I missed that car so much. And my weird midlife crisis, I'm like, I want a Chevy Beretta. And my wife was cool with it because she's the best wife ever. And this came up on eBay for 600 bucks. I was a lone bidder. And the rest is history. This has to be a repaint because it is in such great condition. Nearly perfect condition. The badges too. I think that Indy should be up more. So I think they repainted it and then placed... The stickers, the new old stock, original stickers, I would imagine. They appear to be um, OEM stickers in the wrong position. They just got it slightly wrong, I believe. Not sure, though. Could be wrong. Right there is the only paint scuffing. And then right here, where I unfortunately hit it with a lawnmower in my small barn... But overall, that paint is immaculate. The engine is dirty. I know. I'll clean it up one day when I'm finally done pouring money into it.
I forgot to point out that the Indy edition has the moonroof, not a sunroof, but a moonroof. And the seals have to be replaced, which is gonna be fun. This weather stripping here is so hard to find. And I only saw one guy who wanted used ones for $200 on eBay. And I don't know if it was for a pair. I think it might have just been one side. I can't remember. It's been a couple years. And he wouldn't wiggle a penny down on his price. So, yeah, I didn't buy those because I don't even know if they were going to fit. This trim on both sides right here, too, starts to delaminate. This is the other side of the vehicle. Driver's side, you can see it delaminating there. I was paying attention on an eBay auction, luckily, and I was able to buy a new old stock light setup where it's the backlights and it has that bottom portion and then it has that other light. So in case this one ever goes or is broken or whatever, I'll have a brand new old stock one. This top portion though, I do not have a new one and they're hard to find. I couldn't find them online at all, unfortunately. I did buy one from a guy, I believe in Texas or Oklahoma, and in transit, it broke naturally. So that was kind of a bummer. I love this car though. It's so much fun to drive. It has a lot of torque. Not a race car by any stretch of the imagination, but again, the five-speed manual makes it a lot of fun too. I love this back exhaust too. So we'll fire it up. GM did a great job with these 3.1 and 2.8 V6s and the audible exhaust noise. These handles are well made and are great in my opinion. So if anyone is watching this and knows, are these called the shark noses? You can kind of see why. They kind of resemble a shark in the front or a dolphin. The way it just shapes. So the last year that Chevrolet produced the Beretta was in 1996. The later years had slightly better interiors with different dashboards and a few small odds and ends. The body basically stayed the same though. Please excuse the filthy interior. Nothing special. You can see the five-speed manual stick. So this has the interior floor lights, which are pretty cool. I don't think my 88 had that. But I might be wrong. This is what GM really got wrong in the late 80s and early to mid 90s. Their interiors, in my opinion. Look at how bad that roof is. My 88 suffered from this also. This has to all be ripped out and redone. My carpet is shot. And water does somehow come into these. I've read that that is a problem. I don't think my 88, again, had that problem. But I think it's either coming in through the firewall or these bad seals. Now, I've read that a lot of people thought it was coming in through the firewall. So it just smells moldy and is horrible. So I'm going to rip this out. Guy on eBay has customized GM spec uh, carpet material. And you can get any color you want. So I'm going to get like a matching teal to the body. The funniest thing I read when reading up on this unknown water leak that 
Chevrolet Beretta owners suffer from was a guy that said he bought his, took it to the dealership, and they couldn't find where it was leaking from. And they told him the car was like two years old. This is funny. It was a comment, I think on YouTube. I just couldn't stop laughing. Maybe it was a blog comment. But regardless, they said, maybe you shouldn't drive your car when it's raining outside. And the guy was being for real. <laughs> Here's more interior issues. Look at how that's detached. It's just very cheap. This comes off. Very cheap. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I was painting my house and somehow touched this handle and got the yellow paint on it to get that off please disregard the dirty dashboard display this sat in my barn for like the last year and a half or so after i burned up the clutch i was so tired of putting money into the repairs i bought it with like 107,200, and it only has 109,669. as you can see i haven't had a chance to drive it much in the last three years These dashboard displays are cool. This is the analog option. And the India Edition did have the really cool digital displays, but this is the analog one. I kind of like the analog one better because the digitals can go bad and then you're stuck trying to find another one. I have a bad vacuum line, so I have to kind of give it a little bit of gas because the idle's weird. But um, yeah, my original odometer in my 88 Beretta used to go backwards. I thought it was going crazy the one day. And I'm like, man, I think it just like reversed like 200 miles or so. Yep, I caught it doing uh, another occasion. So my odometer would go backwards while I drive it. Oh, it's so bad, it's so good. You can see the gear set up. First, second, third, four, five, and of course reverse. Here's where your heater is, air conditioning, bottom right. Very straightforward. Have to have your cassette tapes, naturally. Delco radio, this one does not work. Very simple. This is that dashboard cover that I paid a lot of money for and it does not fit properly. Really struggled to get it in. Whatever, right? It's better than the original one that's underneath it, trust me. Just horrible cracked plastic, very sharp too, like a knife. Really nasty stuff. Interior lights. I think this one works. Yep. For your glasses. Not bad. So for this car being 33 plus years old now, it's in pretty good condition. I mean, come on, look at those rims. How can you not like that? It's like Baywatch. Look at that, Baywatch text. That Indy. <laughs> My wife calls it the Baywatch car. Again, love it or hate it, the late 80s, early 90s, GM and Chevrolet brands were something else. small piece of American automotive history here and this car was undercoated at the factory I assume and it is rust free for the most part a little bit of rust over the rear back wheel well that has to be fixed but that's about it overall it's pretty solid and this now being a Pennsylvania car I will not let this thing see salt in the future it's just not gonna happen. This has to get fixed, that looks so bad. <laughs> the roof just coming down and it smells so bad like mold. One day, one day, I'm tired of working on it already, I'm not gonna lie. So let me know what you thought of this video, if you liked it or not, and if you like this car or not. A lot of people obviously will say it's a piece of crap car or whatever. But uh, the Beretta will always have a special place in my heart.
I think it's a pretty sharp looking car. That's just my humble opinion, however. Got good corners and curves and everything. That back lighting is so 80s. An old friend of mine was in Iraq during the Baghdad troop surge, which was, I believe, 2008. He was an infantryman, 3rd Infantry Division. And he was like, hey man, I was on patrol the other day and I look over and I saw a Beretta just like yours, which was my old silver 88. And he said it was making him laugh in the turret of the Humvee. So thank you for watching this. And be sure to like and subscribe. I'm primarily an abandoned coal mine YouTube channel where I do explorations and other such related videos on industrial labor history. But I occasionally will upload videos of cars and animals and stuff. So be sure to subscribe if interested. Again, thank you for watching. See ya. Those backlights are so cool. So 1980s. Here's the wiper display. And here's the heating and air conditioning and radio lighting setup. Light display for the front lights. There's a dog through the moonroof. So after making my video today, I realized that I didn't have this dashboard badge, which is original to the vehicle. I think it was on the floor of the vehicle because the dash was in such bad condition. And now that I did a semi-restoration on the dashboard, I'm going to go and super glue it on.